Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. There are times when the decayed area will extend into the inner dental area far enough lingually that causes us to cut a cavity preparation, of course, that will include that decayed area, but might complicate the packing of the amalgam since it is extended so far lingually. To facilitate this situation, oftentimes we will employ a matrix for the class five amalgam restoration. Selecting a piece of matrix material as such and applying it to the tooth for trial, one can insert it, pulling it snugly, and then with an explorer, mark or score the sides of this matrix as such so that it may be trimmed appropriately. With it scored in that position, we will now remove the piece of matrix material, take a crown and collar shears, and appropriately contour the ends of this matrix. Note that they are rounded so that there are no sharp edges that what might injure your hands while you're working. After the one end has been contoured appropriately, as such, we turn our matrix around, and then carefully on the scored area, once again, trim in a semi-circle, This matrix material is very springy and you must hold on to it or it'll fly out of your hands as you're trimming. Once again, rounding off the sharp corners. Now with our matrix fully trimmed on both ends, we can now insert it around the tooth. And if we've trimmed appropriately, we should have enough of the matrix extending out buccally so that we can contour appropriately in the inner dental area. We will then insert a preformed wedge between the matrix and the adjacent tooth. Now these wedges need to be pressed in there so that they press the matrix tight against the tooth. Many times you'll have to insert them even with the buccal surface of the adjacent tooth. One wedge on the mesial, one wedge on the distal, making sure that the matrix is pressed up against the tooth. Now with our matrix in place, we will now apply compound to back up this matrix so that we can support it when we condense our amalgam using a high fusing compound that's been heated, we will add compound to the sides of the matrix, attaching it to the adjacent tooth. Now to ensure that this matrix has been pressed up against the tooth, we heat an instrument press the matrix against the tooth and let the compound gently cool. and gently remove our instrument. 
Now it may be necessary to add a bit more compound to make sure that we have backed up the matrix. What we're trying to do is to form a fourth wall, extending out Buckley, so that we can condense against this. Let us now go over to the mesial, heating our instrument, inserting it into the inner dental area, pressing our matrix up against our tooth. chilling it, and gradually removing it. Now, if there's any compound that is in our field of operation, we want to remove this, ensure that we have access to the cavity. And at this point, we are ready for our packing. Note that our matrix is in place, extending out buccally, supported by compound that has been wedged. We are now ready to condense our amalgam. Once again, prior to condensing our amalgam, it is advisable to pretest our condensers. In this case, we are using a Wesco plastic instrument that we will use at the beginning of our uh, packing. Uh, we will also test our other condensers to see if we have access, a more elliptical condenser, and then a larger condenser. And then we also have a crescent contoured condenser that we can use. If you do not have these available in your kit, but we have them available for you. We have the automatic Kerr amalgam vibrator that is used in such a fashion like this with uh, various types of heads that can be inserted uh, into our uh, contrangle for uh, condensing and for contouring. Now, all of these are available to you and uh, would advise that throughout your sequence of amalgam that you try them. Once again, the sequence and packing is similar to the other class five that you saw. We will add amalgam and pack into the cervical retentive areas first. Using our Wesco condenser, and now the fact that we have a matrix in place, we can pack against this matrix. And we're packing at the cervical area into that cervical retentive groove. Exerting pressure, and this is why it's so important that you make sure that you have your matrix backed up by compound, because you're going to exert pressure right against that matrix. Getting rid of some of our excess amalgam so that we can see our cavity preparation. Now we'll change over to a more elliptical plugger. Once again, packing against that matrix. Now using a crescent condenser to show you what can be accomplished. Vibrating motion. We'll switch over now to our automatic condenser. switch over to a larger head on our automatic condenser. 
And then we will use what is known as a paddle-shaped condenser the next time. You'll notice that we can get a lot of pressure against this amalgam. And you'll note the shininess. Now we've got our overfill, and what we're going to do is to contour with a paddle shape. Now applying this paddle shape to the buckle surface, trying to gain our contour. And then tipping so that we get the cervical area well contoured. You note the very shiny appearance to our amalgam from these automatic condensers. Now we're getting our overfill, but at the same time we're also getting our contour. Holding the instrument in two different directions so that we get a height of contour or the buckle roll to our tube. Now we've condensed our amalgam, and we will once again commence with our carving just as we did in the other situation. Cutting down back into the inner dental area with the point of the instrument against the matrix. Cutting the amalgam back to the cavity preparation. Now we're going to have to get our matrix off in here, so you must work quickly. Now we will want to remove our matrix. We'll necessitates us melting our compound slightly. We've pushed our matrix away from here a bit. Getting rid of our compound. Oftentimes does not come out as easy as you might like it to, but it will break loose. You must expose the wedges so that you can get them out of there. Then we go back to our carving. And of course, this requires that you remember where the margins of your cavity preparation end. Very important, of course, that you realize and that you want to carve back to the prepared surface of the tooth. And unless you can remember exactly, the amalgam has been condensed out beyond these margins. It's necessary that you cut off all of that overhanging amalgam. I hope they'll gently blow that free of these particles. The cube can begin to see the amalgam preparation taking shape.
Now that amalgam will pack deep against that wall towards the lingual surface, and you must get the contour back into the tooth at that point. Now once again with our burnishing technique, similar to the first amalgam that we condensed, we are trying to smooth off the surface and at the same time maintain the contour. Now at this point we have finished our carving and our burnishing and we once again we would remove our rubber dam and dismiss our patient for future finishing and polishing. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.